Asthma is one of the most common diseases worldwide. So we must know what this disease is. Asthma is a disease of our airway and our lungs. And this disease is characterized by chronic inflammation of our airways. There are certain triggering factors which can uh, uh, cause this kind of disease or worsen the symptoms of this disease. If we identify the triggering factors, then we can prevent the symptoms of this disease. So what are the triggering factors? There are some allergens such as house dust mite, mold which can develop in our house or in our building after water leakage problems, pets or animals uh, such as exposure to animal fur or animal dander and also pollens. These are certain allergens. Then there is change of weather. Usually exposure to cold weather can trigger asthma. There are certain irritants, for example, tobacco smoke, car exhaust fume, and strong fragrance. These act as irritants and can trigger symptoms of asthma. Sometimes ex exercise and even laughter can trigger asthma symptoms. Then there are certain foods uh, which are people, some people are allergic to those food and then they can develop the symptoms of asthma and ultimately there are certain medications which medications can cause trigger asthma. So we need to know these triggering factors and try to uh, minimize uh, the exposure of ourselves to these triggering factors. Not all triggering factors can be completely avoided but if we take certain measures then we can minimize our exposure. What are these measures? These measures include wearing masks while outdoor or while there is a possibility that we can be exposed to those triggers. Also, maintaining adequate hand hygiene is essential. During COVID pandemic, it is seen that because of following appropriate hand hygiene and wearing masks, acute attack of asthma has significantly reduced during COVID. Then, taking vaccination against influenza and also a vaccination against COVID-19. It is because viral respiratory tract infection is one of the most common trigger for asthma attack. Avoidance of smoking, that is cessation of smoking and avoidance of exposure to passive smoking as well. In some people, betel nut can cause asthma, so avoidance of chewing betel nut is also essential. Exercise cannot be completely avoided. So what we need to do, we encourage our patients to maintain a regular physical activity that will actually benefit them. But before doing any kind of exercise, we always encourage warm up. What does it mean? It means that doing simple walking or stretching for at least 6 to 10 minutes and then going to the main exercise. The exercise should be increased gradually that we call it graded exercise. And we must know that when we develop symptoms during exercise, we must stop exercising. People should be educated about the medications that can be taken when an attack of asthma happens during exercise. There are acute reliever therapies or rescue therapies that can be taken during that moment. And ultimately, there are certain medications such as we call them NSAIDs and in plain non-medical term, they are known as uh, painkillers. These can uh, also cause trigger of asthma. Aspirin, which is a heart medicine. In some people, this is a trigger for asthma. And beta blocker, another medicine for heart and blood pressure can cause trigger of asthma. So if we follow these measures, then we can minimize the attack of asthma. Actually, diagnosis of asthma is mainly clinical, which means that there are certain symptoms which people from asthma usually suffer. So if a person is suffering from those specific symptoms, then we can suspect that the person may have asthma. And then we can do some tests. These tests include lung function test, pheno, and also some supportive blood tests. The supportive blood tests include serum total immunoglobulin, serum specific immunoglobulin, serum eosinophil count, as well as sputum eosinophil count. The supportive blood test mainly indicate whether the person has tendency to allergy or whether the person is atopic. 
because relationship between atopy and asthma is well established. Now the symptoms if we have then we will suspect asthma are number one shortness of breath, number two cough, number three chest tightness and number four wheeze which is sound during expiration or sound when you are breathing out. The most important thing is that these symptoms are, have, are actually variable which means that these symptoms can vary in intensity as well as in frequency over time and these symptoms may be absolutely gone when the, there are no triggers and usually these symptoms are more prominent in early morning and in late night. Whenever a person is exposed to a trigger then the, a normal person usually do not respond to that trigger. Their airway is not affected due to that trigger. But asthma person, their airway is hyper responsiveness or hyper reactive. As such, in their case, whenever they are exposed to the triggers, their airway become narrows. And as such, they develop those symptoms and they are unable to breathe out properly. With um, advancement in science and technology, there is advancement in treatment of asthma and uh, the newest advancement in asthma treatment are the introduction of biologic agents. These are certain agents which actually target uh, certain inflammatory mediators in the pathway of asthma pathogenesis. So uh, these treatments are actually very specialized treatments and they have certain indications. Usually when uh, people who are suffering from asthma, their symptoms are not being controlled with the conventional treatment of asthma, uh, that is the maximum conventional treatment of asthma, then uh, these medications can be introduced under specialist supervision. With the development of uh, these kind of medications, uh, we, ha we have uh, reduced dependency on a certain other medications which can cause some long-term side effects. So this is actually a good news for us that these kind of medications can help in reducing morbidity and mortality related to asthma.